No. <laughs> this literally sums up my weekend in in my week in tech. <laughs> Mine too, I guess. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, sorry about that. <clears throat> no, no, it's fine. Oh boy. So you broke your laptop. So my bro yeah, I don't know what quite happened to it. So I put it away nice and safely on Sunday night. And then I woke up to Monday morning and it wouldn't turn on. And now it needs a new hard drive and motherboard. So I'm not entirely sure what happened between me putting it away on Sunday and Monday morning. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it's quite, it's, it's, it's fine because I found somewhere here that can do it, but it's like 150 pounds, well, um, which is fine. And it's, it's cheaper than a lot cheaper computer, than I think. Right? Exactly. Um, but yeah, so it's just been a bit of a nightmare because I haven't been able to work this week for a, a properly turn on laptop. Yeah. What do you have for tattoos on your on your wrist? Oh, um, it's just a pattern, just some random ones I got in Bulgaria. I just got them in Bulgaria. <laughs> How about your other, my, your other I, I, Um, just this uh, rock and roll and a clown. Nice. And then I have this one, which is my favorite. Whoa! What is that? <gasps> oh, it's cool. an area. Oh my and God. then I have some on my back, but is that I can't. On the <laughs> is that on the inside of your thigh? Outside. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> my sister-in-law got a um one that looks it looks similar to the aerial one, but it's like it's a big um circle, but it's like the um the spine of a cat. So oh wow, that's so like amazing! The cat tail and the you know it's like all curled up. Oh, that's so cool. I love cats. We, we all got, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> right? Yeah. We all got cat tattoos right before their wedding. Um, so. Oh, that's, amazing. That's, that's so cool. That that's got. so cute. That's such a cute idea. Um, but yeah, so when I went to get the hoop done, um, there was a girl in the tattoo studio. She was training and she had some flashes and like designs already. And um, and she was, and I, I said to her, I was like, oh, I want your designs are really cool. And they were so cheap. I think they were like 20 pounds. Um, and she was like, oh, yeah, I'm just, I'm dying. I just need to practice. So I was like, oh, yeah, just do these on my arm. It's fine. Bless her. Like, it took her eight hours um, because she was going so slow. Oh. Um, and she was, like, so nervous that she did a really good job. <laughs> She's a good friend now as well, which is good. <laughs> uh, which one was that? Uh, this one. Oh gosh, eight hours. Yeah, she was going so slow and so deep. Like it was the point where, like, the tattoo owner was like, "You need to like speed this up. <laughs> this isn't okay." I like need to eat and stuff. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Say oh my word. <laughs> but you're so the, the, the leg one only took two hours. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, <laughs> your leg only took two hours. Yeah, two, two and a half hours. It was so quick. Oh my gosh. Haley, if I if I had known um that you had those those super cool tattoos, I have a friend that just she just closed out her podcast about um tattoos. Oh cool. Oh nice. Um, it was called Your Ink Story and it was <laughs> all about the artwork that people put on. Oh, I feel like, I think I've seen yeah, something or something like that. But yeah. Well I, I was one of her guests, before. so I I was on it just Oh, so you would have shared it. Oh yeah, that's where I've seen yeah. it from then. Um yeah, but it was really cool. And she's never had a tattoo, but she's just, she's obsessed and just so <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I'm getting, um, I'm getting more done in March. Cool. Uh, Every so, time I get one done, I'm like, this is the last one. And then it never is. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I have two and I, I keep thinking that I might get a third, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't like pain. Yeah. It's such a process. No, exactly. It's the pain that puts me off. I um my back tattoo, I've got like a big piece on one side and like halfway through, I was like, I'm gonna be sick or I'm gonna throw up. I'm not entirely sure which way this is gonna go. Yeah. Um, yeah, if somebody told me that there was a place that it really would not like I they promised me it wouldn't hurt, I'd be like, that's where I'm gonna have it. Um I think the arms are fine. Um like that. And my, my arms didn't hurt so much. Yeah. The um this one 
to be fair, the arm, all of the arm ones were fine. I don't remember them hurting apart from my crown one when it hit the veins. But my back piece and my leg piece, oh my God, I was like, I'm literally paying to be tortured. Um, my first one was my cat before my sister's wedding. <laughs> Um, and it's on the back of my neck and it's very simple and it was supposed to be a little bit more detailed and I quit because <laughs> it hurts so much. It's just the outline of a cat right now, but it was supposed to like have her name and it was supposed to have like her, <laughs> her life dates. Yeah. Um, I'm going back in March to get my back piece finished because she needed to go over the lines again to make them deeper. And I was like, can't do it. Can't do it. Not right but now. Like, another time. <laughs> And then um, my second one is, um, and so I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not doing that again. My second one is right here. And that hurts so bad. Oh, that's so, oh, that's so cute though. Yeah, the chest is the worst. Yeah. Um, I mean, I want to chest worse than the, than the back of my neck, but it hurts so bad. It's just such tender skin. Yeah, I, I wanted um, my rock and roll one, which was my first tattoo on the back of my neck. And the tattoo artist wouldn't do it because he said it's, it's not like a, uh, first tattoo place because it hurts too much he refused to do it on the back of my neck so I had got it on my arm instead dang it <laughs> <laughs> where was where was your friend when I was doing that <laughs> I was just thinking it was it's like a place where it's you know it's sort of like hide and seek sort of you know yeah it's like, an easy place but yeah like it's you know it'll it's sort of like peek out and but not like unprofessional whatever mm -hmm. like if you wear your hair down no one will know but if you put it up it's like oh oh you have a tattoo that's really cute <laughs> yeah i'm at the point now i'm like i just can't cover mine anymore <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um anyway <laughs> uh so what is uh, is brazil hot right now you're wearing a tank top it's, it's not it's cold. hot it's it's hot it's very hot but it's very stormy um so it's like the tail end of rainy seasons or coming into I'm not quite sure whether it's coming into spring or it's coming into autumn but I've been told that the season is changing and it's going to get less wet um but it is very hot um so sort of like the mid-afternoon storms are quite a welcome right when we first got here they said that it had been like a drought for a few weeks and then there were storms but the, the storms were like non-stop for a week um so we couldn't do anything you just can't go out and it's too heavy. And the storm last night was terrifying. It was so loud. Oh my god! Um, so it's um, it's but it, they're getting like the storms now are getting more few and far between. So like it's gone from like all day, every day to like a couple of hours in the afternoon. And we haven't had any rain or storms today. That's lucky. Yeah, the season's changing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the clouds are nice um, and coming into carnival from next week is like going to be nice with the clouds. So I did a blocker at the weekend and when the sun came out, it was horrible. It was just so hot and it was just like, you could just feel it on your head. And I was like, I just, and like, and there's no shade because you're in the middle of the city. That's not my favorite. And, and it's, it's intense. I don't like that. No. Um, uh so <clears throat> i'm gonna take my earrings out because i feel like the best on my headphones and you might pick up the sound so one second sorry don't be sorry <laughs> uh <laughs> so where uh how long are you in brazil for uh three months overall we leave at the end beginning of march so we hit one other month to spend a month in Recife, um, which is in the north, which is a really, really nice city. And it's sort of like a beginner's entry into Brazil. It's very safe. It's very quiet. It's not very touristy. The people are so friendly. Oh. Um, it was such a treat to be able to sort of sit on the beach past past dark, because you can't do that here. Oh. Um, and, um, and so it's like a nice sort of like, lead in to Brazil and then we went to a place which is when someone says to you in Brazil that it's just outside of somewhere it's not just outside of somewhere I think coming from America it's probably the same thing but coming from a small country like the UK it's like it's just outside of Salvador 14 hours later <laughs> mm. there's no such thing and as so that we went, right no it's like it's just down the road is it though? 
Yeah, that's what they say in um, Maine. That's what they say in Maine. It just kind of wrote a piece. It's, it's, a, it's a silly saying. But we went to a place called Sarah Grande, which is, oh my gosh, it was, I didn't want to leave. It was absolutely amazing. It was, I've, when we came to Rio last year, we came to Brazil, we only did Rio. And Rio is intense at the best of times, especially during carnival. We had our phone stolen. It was really like loud and crazy all the time. Like, and obviously when you go to Brazil, all everyone ever tells you is that oh, it's super dangerous. Be careful. Like, look after your things. Wow. And then like going to Recife, which is another major city, it's just seeing that's the, the what like the softness is you still have to watch your back, but it's very soft. It's a softer city than Rio. But going to Sarah Grande, like I'm sitting on the beach, so I can leave my things on the beach and go for a swim and know that they're gonna be there when I get back. I can have my phone out on the table. It's family friendly, like where we were staying is a little cute little like lesbian town. And it's uh it's just it's so nice when you were in the middle of the jungle on the beach. It was it was so nice. Um so it's like a nice relaxing entrance before Rio. <laughs> And we're going to Sao Paulo next, and I've not been to Sao Paulo, and I'm a little bit apprehensive about it because every time I have told a local that I'm going to Sao Paulo, the literal response is, "Why are you going there for?" So, yeah. so it's um, I'm and I'm not a big city person. I like jungles and beaches and small towns, and um, so and Rio is obviously massive and quite intense. So Sao Paulo, I'm quite. Um, I'm excited to see a new place, but a little bit apprehensive about the safety of it. Mm, yeah. it it's just exhausting here sometimes, just constantly having to watch your back. Like I have what they call a thief phone. Uh, it's just a crap phone. I spent my like, £100 phone um, with a, uh, the Brazilian SIM card in it with absolutely no apps on it, which I take out when it go out. Mm. And if it gets stolen, I've got nothing to lose. It's just, it's one of those things, it's like, it's such, like, I love it here. I love Brazil. Brazil is incredible, but it's quite exhausting. Oh, wow. Now, have you had that experience in, in a lot of places, or is Brazil just special so far? Um, Brazil has sort of been, the, like Mexico, actually, I tell you, like, Mexico is worse than Brazil. I don't think that I would ever go back to Cancun. Um, just, it is... It's not my vibe at all. Like, I really didn't enjoy Cancun. Mm. Um, and it's so expensive, but it's obviously a tourist hotspot. And, but, like, the thing is, in Mexico, is like, you you see things happening in front of you. Like, you see people frog march, bank, like, ATM machines. Like, we, we, the day before we got to Cancun, there was, like, a big shootout on the beach. So, like, you're sitting on the beach and there's, like, a sniper next to you. <laughs> there's, like, military everywhere. Um, the day after we left, Three people got gunned down in a hotel. It's and then everyone that you speak to, like every Mexican that you speak to, has a story. They have a story about the cartel and the drugs, and it's so intense. Mm -hmm. um, like when we were, when we got there, it was all over the news that I think it was the state of Chihuahua um, had been put on lockdown on red alert, and you couldn't travel there because the cartel had overthrown the local government. Oh my word! And so it's like it's so intense there. Um, but I, I just didn't feel, you can't ever settle like you're told things like you don't sit outside in restaurants because you just could be in the wrong place at the wrong time you could be sitting next to the wrong person um, and it's just it's you just yeah. can't really enjoy yourself fully yeah you can never let here your guard is, down and just relax no here is fine like here I don't feel like that here is like I watch my back I don't have my phone out if I need to get my phone out I'll go into a shop or something like that that that, that level of awareness um and it's and it's one of those things is like there's a there's a saying in South America called don't give papaya and the thing is it's like if you don't show it to them you don't have your phone out you don't have it in your hand they're not going to take it from you no one's coming up to you and grabbing your bag and forcing you to, to take things out right I feel that in Mexico they might <laughs> um, so it's sure. it's very different but um I think Brazil is the most intent for Rio to be honest because the other places I've been to in Brazil so far have been incredible I've not felt any form of unsafe um but I think Rio probably out of all of the South American countries I've been to is definitely the most intense the cities rather but it was the most intense like I was walking um we went to see the Stellarone steps in Rio which is a big tourist attraction and the steps are fine and everyone's fine and then sort of you 
turn into the wrong road and it is just like we 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 got an Uber back and this Uber went down this road and it was just sketchy as hell. And I was like, I know the doors are locked on this Uber and I don't feel safe. <laughs> you just, it would, and, and the thing is as well is they stand in front of the cars, they don't move out the way. It's just and so everything's slow and it's like there's no way of escape. It's yeah, that was quite intense. But yeah. um I think, oh. I think it all depends where you go. Um, as I said, the rest of Brazil I found is fine. Like Ecuador, for example, um, Quito, the capital, I wouldn't would never go back to Quito. It was so unsafe. So unsafe. Like I didn't even want to step outside the apartment. Oh my goodness. And it was there's such a because Ecuador is still not very touristy country. So and they got really badly hit by COVID. And the oh. poverty levels there are so low. Like the, the poverty line is so like there's so much poverty. Oh. And you'll be in a really nice part of the city and then opposite the street, there's like one side it's mansions and tourist attractions and museums and really nice bougie restaurants and cafes and then literally cross the road and it's just skid row. Mm-hmm. And there's like such a like such a divide. Um and so it just it's very like I did not feel comfortable in Quito at all. Oh my goodness. Um we were there for like eleven days and I could have left in four. And there's not much to do there either. Um so but the rest of Ecuador was absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Wow. So it, it does all really depend where you go. Um, so do you guys have a rule of, is it three months, every three months you're moving? Um, no. So we, we initially, when we started traveling, we did three months to three months just because of our insurance and it covered us for three months. We did sort of three months in Europe and then come home, sort our stuff out, go away again. But we wanted to do South America and I was like, well, I'm not doing three months in South America and I'm not coming home every three months in South America because it cost us a fortune. Right. And so we just sort of bought backpackers insurance. And though it's an additional expense, I think it was like seventeen hundred pounds just for insurance. Oh, there's such a thing um, as, as because, there's such a thing as backpackers insurance. Yeah, there's not many companies that do it and the best one is apparently World Nomads. Um but which we have and I don't I don't rate them so much. Um I just I don't think they're very helpful. And we, um, so for example, we we got the additional hiking um, package because we were originally going to hike Machu Picchu. Oh. Um, but then we couldn't do it because we were in the protests in January in Peru and they, the government shut down Machu Picchu. And we were emailing an insurance company because we'd, we'd already booked a tour. And luckily the tour refunded us. But the insurance company were like, we don't cover the change of mind. And it was like, it's not change of mind. We physically cannot do the tour. And they were like, yeah, but you can come back at a later date. I'm like, I'm not circling back around to Peru when I don't have to to do Magic Picture because the insurance won't cover me. This is why I have insurance. Right. <laughs> and they were like, we don't cover change of mind. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so wow. it, it was quite interesting. Um, but um, they covered us when we had our phones stolen and things like that. So it, we can't, like can't complain too much and it's it's sort of, it covers medical and everything so it's, it's definitely good to have but yeah you can you can book a so you, with backpackers insurance you sort of put in your dates where you're going and how long you're going for and it covers the whole trip okay wow that's so cool <clears throat> um i had talked to somebody oh i forget when i talked to liz um in the fall maybe uh she's an author but she's she's sailing the world i probably told you that She's sailing. You did, yes, amazing, yeah. She just left Cartagena, and they're in the Dominican Republic, I think, right now. Uh, Oh, perfect! But uh, they were there for. They were in Cartagena for almost a year. Oh, I bet she sailed. Is it is it Cartagena and the Rosario Islands, or is that Santa Marta? I can't. Cartagena, and the Rosario Islands. I bet she sailed around those. Those islands are stunning. Mm. they just they were they stayed there for a long time because the weather was really iffy and they were a little nervous about Mm -hmm. the um the waters and the pirates yeah i can imagine (laughs) Uh, maybe maybe i was the one that was worried about the pirates 
but um <laughs> I, I i remember bringing the pirates up and maybe that's what i remember but um i that's i i didn't know about that type of insurance that's really cool <clears throat> um so you guys are just you're just um you're just digital nomads yeah <laughs> is that, yeah, is we that work, what, you, uh, what do you do for work? yeah no definitely so we run a pr marketing agency online um most of our clients are based in the uk um yeah i think all of our clients right now are uk based and but they're all very incredibly understanding and very 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 responsive positively responsive to to our lifestyle choices um and patient with the time zones and things like that we've been very lucky but basically i i suffered that from really i used to run an agency in london and i suffered from really really severe burnout and i was really wow. ill and i decided after a while, because it took a long time for that decision to sell in, I even I even had therapy to make the decision uh, to close the business. And we went traveling for two and a half years uh, without working, um, basically until the state went help. <laughs> and, um, and we decided, we realized that, okay, we need to go back to work, but we didn't want to stop traveling. And we, so we were like, the solution is, is we, we, we've done it before, we've built, I've built a business before I can do it again. It's just a different circumstance. Yeah. So we we created the BLO, our online BLO marketing company. Wow. And so you and Marcus are both doing that? Yeah. So I do the PR side and Marcus does the marketing. Nice. That's awesome. Um, and I love that you said that, um, I, I know this is recording. It was recording when I came on, which I, I that's never happened to me before. Tech, it's cool. Um, but we'll... <laughs> Uh, we'll do like an actual uh, thing for for the podcast. This will just be on YouTube and it's goofy and whatever. It's fine. <laughs> um, I don't I don't edit for YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. No, no, why not? I don't edit. I don't have an editor. <laughs> it's just me, and I'm not a techie. But um, your conversations are the best conversation, right? Um, <clears throat> but it's then I don't have to like I don't have to shorten it or anything. Like if you want the uncut yeah. version, just go to YouTube. Uh, but so when you said that you needed ther a therapist to tell you that you needed a break, like it's so, it's so important to say stuff like that. I, I feel because we feel guilty, right? Like we feel guilty, like I, you know, or like, like weak, right? Like I feel burned out. Exactly. Like if I were to quit, like I'm a quitter, like I have this agency, this is my I business. Fail. Yeah, exactly. But like, I just, I went through a similar thing. Like I literally for like 30, almost 35 years, I never slept well and I could never, I never figured it out. And like, I just started, I did, um, this summer, uh, CBT cognitive behavioral therapy. And, um, we, yes. figured, we figured out that I'm just a later, I'm a late bird. Like I just have to stay <laughs> up later. My circadian Everyone rhythm is different. not normal. Um, no, and so everyone I, has different yeah so I've been going to bed at a normal hour with everyone else and like laying in bed not sleeping and then I like wake up in the middle of the night and I, it's just like it's mm -hmm. I've been torturing myself for years and I needed somebody else I needed a doctor to say stop doing that like you stay up until you're tired dang it and you sleep when you're tired and it works like <laughs> it works like a charm it's crazy no, there's there's a book called Why Do I Sleep? And I think it's called that. I will double check, but it's absolutely incredible. It talks all about evolution and how evolution and our ancestry affects our sleeping patterns and our cardiac rhythms and how at different stages in our lives our cardiac rhythms are different. Um, it's like for example, the reason why te it explains why teenagers always sleep in until late and then why some people are night owls and some people are early birds and, and why it changes and, and affects the things like women's health and, and, and hormones and even menopause and things like that. Right. It's such an interesting book. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like your your um your burnout thing with the therapist, like we are so afraid of what people are going to think of us or, you know, mm -hmm. to affect somebody else that we're torturing our own selves. 
Um, and we need, so we need a professional like, person to say, you stop that. No, exactly. So it's the first thing, huge, huge advocate for CBT. Um, I remember I, I did it when I was like 17, 18 years old and I hated it. It didn't work. So I was always like, I don't like CBT. I don't think it works. I don't think it's like the right type of therapy. And then as I got older and I started to explore it again, I'm like, this is amazing. And it's like, and I'm in a better, like, I'm in a better position in my life now to understand it and appreciate it and understand how it works right. and apply it, apply it. And I have an app, a CBT app on my phone and I use it every day and it, it gives me journal prompts and homework and everything that you would get from CBT therapists apart from the talk. It's so, so interesting. Oh. Um, let me find out. I can't actually remember what it's called. It's called Clarity. Clarity? Clarity. It's, it's free to a degree. You can upgrade it, but I like I did like a free trial and I don't really see the point in upgrading. You get so much from it with a free version. Uh, but with therapy, yes, yeah, so I, I have I have therapy weekly still. Um, I like absolutely like even when I don't feel I need it, it just absolutely keeps me on course. And I'm a huge, huge advocate for mental health and I very much open to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, it took me it, between making the, realizing that I had burnout to making the, to, to closing down the business. It took six months. The whole transition was six months. It was a slow process because exactly that I was having, like I was wasn't sleeping. I was exhausted. But like also we trying to deal with the burnout while also trying to make one of the biggest decisions of my life. Right. And 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 communicating that to clients right. and and the team. And it's just like, I was scared. I had a lot of fears, like, what if this doesn't work? What if I run out of money? What if like, I have to like, start from scratch? Or what if I, what if I, I quit now and fail? And it's like, um, oh, I can't do this. It's like exactly that. It's doubt and fear and, and failure. And it's just, it was such a mix of like negative emotions in like one like period of time. It was like, I don't think I could have, got through without a therapist helping me with that right and and like one thing I would say is like if, if you are burnt out like it's it's not like a lot of like we're taught to believe that burnout is a sign of success like oh you're burnt out you're working hard you're really successful you're doing really well and it's like no burnout means that you have no boundaries in place you're tired you're working too hard you're not saying no to people you're not prioritizing and you're not prioritizing yourself so I have learned like I've come back into this business and so sometimes I'm like, okay, this is like, I don't have the boundaries in place, but like it's, I can recognize them now and I can come in and be like, I'm, I'm not like going to run myself into that. We do four day work weeks at the yellow now. So I have a, a day off. Um, I like the time difference helped because we're three hours behind. So the time I come online, it's like 10, 11 in the UK time. So I'm finishing at like two o'clock. I've got the whole afternoon to myself and do what I want. It works. It's such like a different way of working for me. But I was really even scared to relay that. Like when I set the business up, I'm like, no one's going to go for this. Like no one is going to understand this. And it's just, it, it does, it, it works itself out. For sure. I mean, and if the, if the work that you're putting out is quality, then it's, it will be recognized and it will be accepted. Mm -hmm. it's that's just what it is and and it's ebbs and flows businesses ebbs and flows like December we were so quiet and I was like oh my god like everything's so quiet we're not gonna like have any money or it's gonna like everything's gonna I, I tend to dramatize a lot and I was like everything's gonna turn and it's like now it's like we're so busy and I'm like I just need a break I just need someone to drop off <laughs> that's so that's it's so just, interesting it always comes in ebbs and flows that's really cool. I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess January is when people are like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this on my own and I'm going to start exactly. my business and I'm going to really go for it. And I guess that makes sense. <laughs> and they're still going, which is good. You're still waiting for someone to talk off. <laughs> yeah, no, hopefully they don't, but I need to, I need to uh, we've hired, we have a full-time employee as well, which is an amazing achievement for six months. And she does an incredible job. Her name is Sarah, and um, she's based in the UK. So I know we have her as well. It's like it makes such a difference. Where with like boxed out PR, my other agency, like even though we had like freelancers and things, people working for us, I was like taking on all of the responsibility. I wasn't delegating. I was being very precious about things. 
And then clients get used to that. And then when you try to hand the work over, clients are like, no, I don't want to work with anyone else. <laughs> so it's like, it's just this, yeah. So there's whole, like, it's been a whole process. Yeah. Well, I mean, and uh, yeah, I mean, you just, it's, so I think sometimes you just have to, you have to have that experience that, you know, why, this is why we delegate, right? That, you know, at first you're like, no, I can do this just as easily and I can do it better. And then mm -hmm. I don't have to question anyone. I don't have to pay anyone and blah, blah, blah. But, but then, you know, then the consequences of that are burnout and you have nothing yeah. to give and you can't function and, you know, everything falls apart. But now you have that understanding and you have, you can put those boundaries into place and you can say, mm -hmm. I need help. And you just ha you're just more mature in that, you know, you've, you've had the, the other experience that you can say, I'm going to do this differently. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And I'm still learning. It's for the process, but it's, it feels a healthier process now than was my old agency. Awesome. It wasn't a healthy business. I hadn't built a healthy agency. I hadn't become a healthy professional. Everything was like, I'm healthy. Um, and that's what my therapist taught me during that process as well. He was like, there were two things, they're healthy and unhealthy. And you put things into boxes and said, everything at the moment is unhealthy. And it's like, that, like, how do you make those elements healthy? And and he sort of taught me as well. I was like, I was working every hour. Like, it was affecting our relationship. I was working all the time. And it just, it just wasn't feasible to continue the way that it was continuing. Right. And so sure. taking a break, like I remember I was in Sri Lanka which was about six months into our travel. We spent a month in Sri Lanka and I hadn't worked for, I think I had been working on like a freelance client for like one day a week, but I dropped, like I'd finished it just before we went to Sri Lanka. Um, and I remember walking through a park, a national park in Sri Lanka and just like having the realization that I didn't, work, wasn't working. And I didn't have to check emails and I didn't have to answer to anyone. And I just stood there and cried. And I was like, this is like the most freeing, liberating moment I've ever experienced. Oh. And made a very like promise to myself there that if I ever do go back to work, I'm always going to check in on this feeling and make sure that I'm feeling like this. Wow. That's amazing. Cool. Yes. Yeah, it was very empowering. So I'm very much an advocate now is like, take a break, take, take a week off. It doesn't matter. Like nothing's going to happen. The only thing that's going to happen is it's going to affect you in a positive way. Right. You'll be rested and you'll be fresh and yeah. ready. And sometimes you need, like, you can't make the changes you need to make and you can't, you can't see what's wrong if you're in the thick of it. It's like you're, you're in reactive mode and you're in response mode and you can't. So you need to take a step back sometimes and to, to realize what, what's going wrong mm -hmm. and to realize your role in it and how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I stopped. It wasn't until we decided that we wanted to go traveling and I, and I stopped that I realized how exhausted I was. Yeah. Wow. How long... Um... Oh, I feel like I should start. I mean, I feel like I should start recording, but we're already recording. But I feel like I should do like an intro for the podcast podcast <laughs> um, and get this started so that we I have something to put up on um, on the actual podcast. But um, so I'm just going to do. All right, everyone, this is how it goes <laughs> for those watching YouTube. Um, I'm just going to do uh, a quick intro and then. Um, and then we'll we'll uh, just continue co the conversation. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to ask you about uh, about be yellow. Like what what is that about? So that's, <laughs> that, that's that's how I plan to start. So I'm just going to you know this is Haley Knight and perfect. Um, yeah, there's so, a fun story by now. <laughs> cool, awesome. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Okay, get it together, Aim. 
<laughs> my guest today is Haley Knight. Uh, Haley is a, she is a traveling fool. She is right now uh, visiting us from Brazil and uh, she is part owner of, or co-owner, co-owner, part owner oh, of, co-founder, yeah, yeah. co-founder of Be Yellow. And so, um, Haley, thank you so much for joining me today. Broken laptop on your cell phone and everything. <laughs> um, I, I'm so glad to have you here and and to finally meet you face to face. How are yes, you today? I'm really happy to be here. I'm good. I'm good. A little stressed. I'm having a stressful week with a broken laptop and trying to work, but I'm good. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So tell us about Be Yellow. So Be Yellow is my, my I, sh, I run with my husband, Marcus, a PR marketing agency. So I manage the PR side and he manages the marketing side. And we are a PR marketing agency for socially responsible businesses. So we work with businesses that are basically doing good in the world. So we work with a woman that um, she's a menopause coach um, and she's a corporate trainer. She works with businesses to make them more menopause friendly. We work with a sustainable fashion expert and um, so that type of client um, work the vegan brands um, and we work with a woman that's trying to encourage more women into the property industry. So basically like people that are doing great things and companies that are doing great things. That's so cool. Yay. I mean, that totally fits into my, I mean, if you've been paying attention, so I just had um, I mean, this will be a couple of weeks in, but um, I just had uh, Mara Menekin, who has a sustainable chocolate business. And um, yes, one, of the things, <laughs> one of the things that she um, one of the things that she was really passionate about is social um, social sustainability. And so she hires people who are um, like neurodivergent people that would have a hard time finding jobs otherwise um you know a lot of people a lot of her employees are like autistic and they are super meticulous Amazing. and so like packaging the chocolate it takes them a little bit longer but you know these people would have a hard time finding jobs and you know people are so they're so sticky on like speed and stuff and you know it's just so important yes. to give people that purpose and and that fulfillment and, and the opportunities as well i've just started working with a dating app actually called matter um, who is specifically for neurodivergent individuals to connect awesome. and, um, and I've done a lot of work with autism in the past and my um, I've, I have uh, uh, autism in the family and so it's um, very close to my heart but yeah I know exactly that is that people are so it's we still look at people as statistics sometimes rather than humans and it's it's like I had like a phase and I'm, I'm sure it's not owned by me but it's like we have to look at people as human beings and not human doings. 100%. And um, and like these, some of these people, like people with autism, uh, people that are on the spectrum, um, people with disabilities, is that they're they're so some of them are so talented and and so skilled. And I always feel that the businesses that overlook them are over overlooking key talent for their businesses and the business growth, a hundred percent for sure. Yeah. Um, and then I had um, just this this week, uh, Sonia Parenti, Miss Love Tara, the, uh, the sustainable fashion lady um, <laughs> who I've been, oh my gosh, for so long, so excited. Uh, but so you've got the sustainable fashion person and the social, you're, you're doing the social sustainability. I just, that's so cool. It's like right in line. And the menopause. It's super lady, important to me. It's super important to me as well. Like I've, I've I've been in PR for 10 plus years now and I've I started out in, in fashion. I've done the superficial side of things and I'm, I'm a storyteller at heart as well. So I like to, I, I want to support people doing great things and I want to share their stories. That's, that's predominantly why I do PR. Mm, cool. Wow. Um, and so uh, you are, you wanted to talk about world travel as well as, <laughs> Um, activism and uh, and supporting <laughs> socially sustainable businesses, um, but you are traveling the world. Yes. Yes. How I have you, been how... for um, almost it'll be three years in September. Three years. 
Wow. Nonstop. Nonstop. Because you're from London or the UK. And you're from London. London. Yeah. yeah. And um, now you're in Brazil, but you said that you've been in Sri Lanka and you've been in okay. Ecuador. We've been a covered, covered a lot of ground in, in two and a half years. Um, so we've done, I'm just trying to think of the, the tracks. So we've done a lot of Europe, we've done all the Balkans. So Croatia, Montenegro, Slovenia. I think the only country we have, countries we haven't done a Kosovo are North Macedonia. We've done Slovenia, Montenegro, uh, Serbia, uh, Croatia, Bosnia. And then we've done Albania, Greece, Bulgaria, Turkey. Sri Lanka. Wow. Uh, we've done most of South America now. So we've done Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, and Bolivia. We've done Costa Rica and Central America. We've done America. We've done Florida. And I'm sure I'm missing some countries, but that's it. <laughs> that's the most of it, I think. Now, is it a goal to hit like all the world or is it just like, is it just? Uh, like... Yeah, so I'd love to. So we did Antarctica or the Patagonia when we were in Chile and that was incredible. My goal is to do with continents. Uh, I'd love to get to Africa um, and, and and go to some of the African countries in Tanzania, Cape Town, Kenya. And that that's definitely on my list. I'm... I'd love to do more of North America, to be honest, and do the national parks. Um, I'd love to do the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail. And that would be, for a hike, that would be a dream. But I am nowhere near fit enough to even attempt that. And I've read the book Wild. I know what happens. <laughs> and um, But, uh, yeah, I'd love to do it. I'm, I've done most of Europe now, I would say. I've done most of Europe. And South America. I'd, do, I'd lo love to do more Central America, Venezuela, Guatemala, Honduras, those, those, those countries. would love to do that. Um, do Mexico or some of Mexico. But yeah, it's like there's so much. There's so much. And I think when we started traveling, we were traveling quite quickly. So we, we weren't working. So we didn't have to stay in one place for too long. Right. Uh, we didn't have to worry about things like internet issues and things like that. So we were sort of spending three, four days to a week in each place. I know that's fun. It's incredibly chaotic and you don't see so much. There's only You're very limited to what you can do. So we slow, we travel a lot slower now. We spend sort of a like minimum of a month in places and really get to know it, meet the locals so from a local perspective and that's my favorite part of traveling like I don't like doing the touristy things I just love doing like seeing it from the local perspective and meeting the locals right what's it yeah what's your asking them like where where would you eat or what's your favorite place or why why would someone move here or something like that exactly mm -hmm. so we've met a couple here in Rio and then messages yesterday and they're like, oh, we've hired a car. Let's like drive you around. We'll take you to the local, the, the local places where the local people go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Um, I mean, it, it seems like the, the Balkans, I'm trying to think, they, they don't look very big from the maps. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so the one thing I love about Europe and I always take it for granted and I sort of always realize how lucky I am whenever I come to the Americas, especially is like how convenient every everything is in Europe to get to places like right? in the Balkans, like a two hour drive, you're in a different country. <laughs> it's like, and they are relatively small countries. Yeah. And the issue is, is you can't really do them without a car. Um, Croatia is a bit more set up for tourists, but in places like Bosnia and Sarajevo, uh, Bosnia and uh, Serbia, sorry, you can't do it without a car. You can't get to certain places without a car. And, these countries are beautiful. Uh, Bosnia is absolutely stunning. Like some of it just reminds me of being in Thailand. Mm. And it has so much nature and so much green and mountains, but like there's no real bus system in place. And so you can't just sort of jump on a bus and go to a different place. It's it's not, it's like America really, like you have to drive everywhere. But um, 
it's that's sort of one thing I love about Europe is it is literally you drive two hour drive in a different country. Two hour drive in America, you still in the same state. <laughs> Sometimes Forever. the same city. Yeah. For sure. um, <laughs> but it's like that's that's what I love. But um and as I was like saying it's like in South America in Brazil, especially if someone tells you that it's just outside of somewhere, it's not just outside of somewhere. <laughs> it's like fourteen hours down the road. So we went to a place for Sarah Gunje in, in Brazil and they were like, yeah, it's just outside of Salvador, you'll be fine. And it was like one flight, one day, two buses. And then she needs to get there. It was mad. But, no um, problem. Yeah, it's like, I mean, like Cartagena in Colombia and it was like right next to Santa Marta. And they were like, oh, it's right next to each other. We'll just get like a private private car, like a like boot car hire there. And it's like seven hour drive. <laughs> They're right next door. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's, yeah, so it's definitely something you take for granted, especially when in the UK of the UK being very, very small. I think it takes the same amount of time to drive across the UK than it does Texas. I believe that. Texas is freaking huge. Um, it's, tell, it's, tell me about Slovenia. Crazy. Slovenia is amazing. So, one again, Slovenia is one of the more expensive Balkan countries because it's built for tourism and it has, it's not as touristy as Croatia. Croatia is ridiculously expensive. Now, I was we went there in September and I was shocked. I was shocked at how expensive it is there now. Slovenia is sort of like in the between country where it's still affordable but not cheaper than the rest of the Balkans. Like Bosnia and Serbia, so cheap, unbelievably cheap. Montenegro is still cheap, but Montenegro is pushing towards tourism. Bosnia and Serbia are not. Okay. Um, and but Slovenia is definitely like it's hundred percent worth going to. Like it's so beautiful. The people are so friendly. Um, there's so much like so many different landscapes, and um, and it depends. Like it, there's something for everyone. Um, and Ljubljana, the capital, is just so much fun it's such a fun city it's um we sort of like inadvertently ended up at this range in the piano we were told oh you need to go to these like a carnival they were like metal heads or something and they were like yeah it's like fine there's like bars there and stuff and it just turned out to be this abandoned warehouse that had been taken over for like raids and it was oh it was so much fun we met so many people um and like super lgbt friendly and um which is what i love like i just love those spaces and so but that was a lot of fun and then like you drive sort of like an hour an hour and a half out of the city and you're like the most beautiful waterfalls and mountains and fields and parks it's it's so, there's so much to do there yeah were you saying bosnia was the most beautiful place you've ever seen bosnia in them? the most beautiful balkan country for sure like bosnia is so like under so overlooked as a destination it's it's still recovering um from the war there's a but there's so much history there um and so much it's quite an intense country um but it's so beautiful it's like they are like you'll be driving and you'll come across a mountain range and like it just reminds me of thailand Mm. and we went to these waterfalls it's um uva um Una National Park and it was just another world absolutely another world you would never have thought that you were in the middle of Europe it's just stunning and like it's so cheap and so many cats <laughs> I, yeah I was gonna I was I was just thinking I needed to bring that up so one of the things that I've been following <laughs> I've been following Haley for for quite a while on Instagram and one of my favorite things is that everywhere they go they they're like cat magnets they have these like piles not just like a cat that follows them there are like piles of cats that they feed and care for this is very true (laughs) so when we were staying in bosnia we were in sarajevo the capital and we had this hat we had this apartment and there was lots of like stray cats around and we were there for two months so we were like we have enough time to actually look after these cats and there was one cat there, we called her Maple. She was a black and white cat. When we got there, we thought she was dying. Like she was so ill. Um, she wasn't eating. She looked like she'd had a car accident. She couldn't walk properly. 
So we took her to the vets and the teacher turned out she had like a massive cyst on the side of her head. So they drained it and gave her fluids, gave vaccinations. Um, she was quite a young cat. I think she was like two or three. And she was just like within a week, a different cat. She was playful. She was loving. She was happy. She was eating. She was really healthy. So when we left her, she was a healthier cat. We got another cat um, uh, neutered. Um, we there was kittens there. We rescued a kitten that was abandoned on the side of the road, and we managed to find him a home by the time that we left, which was amazing. I wanted to keep him as a travel cat. <laughs> it came up. <laughs> she heard us talking cats. <laughs> but yeah, so we called him Nomad. Um, but the one of the neighbors um, t- took him in. And, and was going to find a home for him and then up keeping himself. So it was really nice. Um, but yeah, that's why we love Turkey so much because it's just full of stray cats. It's just, they're just everywhere. And yeah. so, but yeah, we, we definitely, um, I don't know whether it's the cats seek us out or we seek them out, but something is happening. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's either yeah, somebody is a magnet, like whether it's the cats and you guys just can't help yourselves or you have the <laughs> magnets and they can't, yeah, one or one or the other, but you guys, <laughs> you seem to find each other one way or the other. I feel like I heard something, it, maybe it's Turkey that they, they have like, is there like a, um, an area where they just like all the cats just like sprawl out on the maybe it's turkey but maybe it's some like there's a place in Antalya which is just by the sort of like a by the water I guess but there's like an area and there's they're everywhere there's hundreds of them um and there's a big cat house that someone has bought and and built and look and looks after them the thing in turkey is they really respect their cats um, excuse me, sorry. It's a drink. Um, sorry. Um, so in Turkey, they really respect their cats. So the cats are incredibly well looked after, the street, the street cats. There's a story um, that they have um, from, from Israel is that uh, Mohammed was supposed to go and give, uh, give a speech. And the cat, his cat was laying on the arm of his down and he cut the sleeve off because he didn't want to wake the cat and so there's a huge huge respect for cats because they're uh, so uh, in to the religion but you don't really find that in other Islamic countries so in Bosnia for example is you don't they don't really have respect for cats hmm. and they're not as well looked after in Turkey but um but yeah, in like Istanbul for example is like obviously like Istanbul cats there's a page for it there's videos there's a, there's a film it's like they're, they're everywhere. I saw a video the other day of a cat just sitting on the bonnet of a car as the car is driving around Istanbul. <laughs> and there's a cat buried in, this is in Istanbul, there's a cat, and he was an influencer cat. He had like a million followers. And there's a big mosque in Istanbul called the Hagia Sophia. And the cat used to sit outside there. And he, when he died, he got buried in a mosque because the only cat in the world to ever be buried in a mosque. Oh. They have like huge, huge respect for street cats there. So they perfect. really do look after them. That's so perfect. Oh my gosh. Um. <clears throat> so you okay? We were talking about this earlier, but before before um we were officially talking for podcasting, but um, so I just wanted to sort of touch on this, uh, that um you guys started traveling because you you had a business but you ended up with burnout but so you you it was like you just had to get away so you just escaped and started um you started traveling but you just you discovered that you really enjoyed it and so this is not this it's not the same what am I trying to say is this the same trip is this the the same trip or did you guys (laughs) So, yeah, it's, it's kind of just been ongoing. Um, we've been back to the UK a few times, um, usually between sort of Europe and then going outside of Europe. So we came back in, we've done a Europe, European trip and we came back in October after Croatia and we were going to Florida in October. So we came back for sort of, change all our things up 
unpack, refresh, things like that. Um, but we've been out since October, since the beginning of October now, and we will be now until I think we go back. We go back in March, and then Marcus is on a retreat in Portugal in May, no April, and then I'm going to see some friends in Spain, and then we'll sort of meet back again in June in Turkey, and then we. The idea then is like we won't probably won't come back to the UK for a while. Okay. Um, we want to try and get to Southeast Asia, but because of the time difference, I think it's seven hour time difference at the moment with the new business, it's just not possible. Mm. You need to be in like a, a stronger position with the business to be able to do that. So that's maybe a next year thing. I think we may either come back this way or do more of Europe. But I have no idea. I have no idea. We. We sort of try and plan as much in advance as we can, but um, we also like to be a bit spontaneous as well. Okay. But so you've been traveling for, you said three and a half years? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Three years in September. Okay. All right. Um, and so you have, you've been really busy, uh, but so... Um, <laughs> And you're traveling mostly backpacking? Like, I mean, you're doing cars. Yeah, so cars. Uh, mostly backpacking. We we have a suitcase, which I begrudge a lot because it just don't technically need it. Yeah. But it's just like, you just, the thing is, is that the more baggage you have, just the more crap that you end up carrying around. And we're like, I, I, I've, I've, I feel like I've mastered the art of packing light. Even though I do look at my wardrobe sometimes, and I'm like, there's so much here that I really don't need. And I'm still like trying to work on that. But with the suitcases, like, you're more, you just find yourself like, you're more likely to buy new clothes and things like that because you're like, oh, I have the room for it. Um, so I like not having, it sounds really stupid, but I like not having that luxury. Like, I'm not a big buyer anyway. Like, I've, I've the same clothes for years. Mm -hmm. I, I really, really buy clothes when I desperately need them. Like to the point I had this skirt and I had it for like five years, probably longer. And I bought it in London and it was the perfect travel skirt. It was amazing. And it literally was a point where there were like holes in it. There were stains. The zip was broken. I was still wearing it. And, and, I, and I eventually got to the point where the zip was so broken. I put it on one day and I literally could not get it off. And I had to cut myself out of it. And even then I was like, oh, I can sew it up. Master's was like, just right away. It's done. <laughs> I guess it's it's telling you, yeah. It's just saying. Oh, it's please. just like, and I, I like, I have like, I like to feel comfortable when I travel. I like like to have comfortable clothes, and I'm not like I don't want to be carrying around like dressy up clothes and things like that. So I like to have like a few nice and two couple of nice dresses, and then. But like, what I'm really enjoying is I'm starting to develop a wardrobe where people are asking me instead of me in that like, oh, this shop in London, this shop in London. I'm like, I got that in Brazil, I got that in Costa Rica, I got that in Croatia. <laughs> that's really nice. That's like there, there's like stories behind my clothes now, and that's really nice. That's really fun. So yeah, I mean, you don't really have to pack any. You can start with almost nothing in your in your case and exactly. just pick something the, up everywhere you go. Thing, the only thing I make sure that I have plenty of is underwear because trying to buy underwear in certain countries when you're traveling is a nightmare. Uh, for sure. And so I always, whenever I go back, I just buy like new packs of underwear because they're the one thing that I always know that I'm like obviously always need, but never like I, I'm never going to be able to find them. Right. Yeah. And that, I mean, it's it's hard to buy them to begin with. Like they never quite fit right. You know, no. Too small, too big. Like yeah. too. And so. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I need. I know what I buy. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the, one, the one common consistent to see in my life. <laughs> Just get them. Get them where you know you can get them. Um. But so, and so you had told me uh before we started um talking on the actual podcast also that you have backpacking insurance, which kind of blew my mind a little bit. I didn't know that was a thing. I mean, I, it makes sense because you can get like motorcycle insurance or <clears throat> trip insurance or whatever. So it's it's like trip insurance, basically, I assume. Yeah, so the general sort of normal insurance is sort of, I think it's a maximum of 
either 60 or 90, it's 60 days, I think, that you can be insured. We have insurance with Amex, American Express, that gives us 90 days. So we can we would, could travel for three months at a time, would have to come back to the UK and then start again, which is why we were coming back every like, three months at the beginning of our trip. But we were like, got to the point where we were like, this is fine for Europe because you can just buy cheap flights to and from. But you could, you can't really anymore. European flights right now are ridiculous. But um, it's fine. But like, we want obviously come further afield. I'm like, I'm not traveling all the way to South America to come back every three months. It's ridiculous. It doesn't work. And so we we looked into um, backpackers insurance. Um, there's only a couple of companies out there. And I think the two biggest ones are World Nomads, which is what we have, and Safety Wings, which I'm not sure now, but when we were looking into it, they only catered for the people in America. So we couldn't get them. We can get it. So we got World Nomads. And it basically, it covers you. So you put in where you're going and the length of your trip, what you're doing. So we sort of, when we did our six months in South America, we put that in and we had to get like added hiker insurance because we were hiking Machu Picchu. And so it is quite expensive. It's like an, a big additional extra cost um, for travel. But I think we paid like, I think it was like 16, 1700 pounds for the, the, the trip for six months but it covers everything that you like covid cover um which is probably i think it's one of the only insurance companies now that covers covid related issues oh, interesting. um it covers medical luggage like lo- like laptops everything like that like health it covers everything so it's really helpful i just like i just the customer service <laughs> i think um could be quite a standard insurance company, I guess, but uh, we, we were supposed to hike Machu Picchu and we ended up um, in, through in January last year during the protests and they closed down Machu The government closed down Machu Picchu. Like there was no tours or anything. And we'd already booked and paid for our tour. So we were emailing the insurance company and they were like, we don't email, we don't, we don't cover change of mind. And it was like, well, it's not change of mind. We literally can't go. They shut it down. And like, well, you could, cut, you could do it another time. You could do it when they open. And I'm like, we're in Peru for like four weeks. We're not going to open and we're not coming back. So that was a bit funny, but luckily the tour company gave us their money back. But we had our phone stolen in Brazil and they covered it, no problem. So it's an insurance company. And they're like, if they can find a reason not to insure you, they'll, they'll, they'll run with it. Um, but uh, it's um, it's definitely, obviously, like, insurance is always worth having, no matter what. But yeah, it's, it's an additional exp- like expense for backpacking. Um, it does get quite expensive. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so you were, you wanted to talk about, um, traveling the world. You wanted to talk about activism. Um, and I mean, you talked about your business and supporting social, um, <clears throat> like socially sustainable businesses, Yeah. Uh, businesses mm-hmm. that Businesses with social values. So yeah. we, we work, um, yeah, as I said, we work with, with businesses with a purpose is probably the best way to put it. Okay. And um, all right. So, so what's next, I guess? What's, what's next for you? Um, so this year is a little different. Um. Marcus and I are doing some solo travel, um, taking taking to our own our own space a little bit. I think it can be really difficult. It is difficult, um, but we 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 not only are we married, we work together, we travel together, we're in, like constantly in each other's pockets. So it's like space is so healthy, and. And like we both, each of us, value our own space. So we're going to have our own sort of separate experiences for a couple of months in the summer just to give each other a breathing space and doing things. And Marcus is going to retreat in Portugal. I'm going to see some friends in Spain. That's and then we'll sort of circle back around in sort of June time in Turkey. And But it's just growing the business, really, um, scaling the business as much as possible. At a sustainable rate. We we think we still have to remember that we're still a startup, we're only six months old. Uh, but we have already hired our first full time employees. Yeah, 
which is amazing. And that's quite an achievement for a small business. So I think we want to try and get someone on in the marketing side of things. But it's, yeah, it's, 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 just, it's a year sort of full of change, but in a really exciting way, like a really different way. Okay. I mean, 2023 was a weird year. So, I mean. I, I remember saying to my friend in 2020 and being like, we're going to look back on this year and we're going to think that it's like the best year ever. It's like every year she gradually just got worse and worse. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. I mean, for a lot of us, 2023 started off pretty good and, you know, very positive And then it ended up kind of in the crapper. So, um so we're we're a little cautiously hopeful for 2024. Yeah, I think everyone's coming into this year very cautious and apprehensive and nervous. <laughs> and they're not like I've seen so many posts on Instagram being like, just don't worry about achieving goals in January. Just just let January happen. <laughs> right. Right. Um yeah, totally. Uh so um oh, so I remember what um the message that you wanted to share, I, I just reminded myself. So um, you had said that the specific message that you wanted to co people to come away with was to do what you can with what you have. And I love that. I, 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 was, I, was, I forgot what I wrote then. I was like, I'm interested to see where this is going. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I, I had to look because I was like, I know there was something that was really important that to me that I wanted to share. Um, uh, so I just had to yeah, so remind myself. That phrase, I, I think, I think, and I could be very wrong here, that it was said by Roosevelt. And I remember being at school and it being like on a massive poster on the wall in class. And it's something that has always stuck with me. Like, do what you can with what you have. And I genuinely feel like that can be applied to every single situation in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's for me it's like it's gotten me out of a lot of trouble <laughs> I um I feel like it is exactly that it's like you can only do what you can with what you have and you like by doing that like by doing what you can with what you have you can progress you can grow you can change and then you get more and you evolve and then you do what you can with what you have then it's like get price at every stage and like building stages to me it's like to me, it's such an important quote. It is something that has really stuck with me. And it has, like, I've been in situations before or in a vet, like in conversations or in work and things like that, and I'm stuck or I, like, feel challenged. And I'm like, okay, what can I do with what I have right now? What, mm. like, what can I actually achieve in this moment with the tools, the information, the knowledge, the advice, the, the tips, the ideas that I have? How can I build on this with what like it's such an important like for me it's such an important quote and so relevant yeah it's like a grounding like what you know stop yeah. stop thinking so far out like mm -hmm. what can I do right now yeah with what I have um and like one of the biggest lessons I've learned in the past few months that I've been doing a lot around self-discipline and it's like you can't have goals if you don't you, you can't reach your goals if you don't have a design plan it's like it's all well and good saying, oh, in six months, I want to own a, I want to make X amount of money. It's like, or I, in six months, I want to travel or whatever, like whatever your goals are. It's like, it's all well and good saying that. But if you don't have a design plan in order to get you to those goals, but what people make the mistake of is that they'll set, they'll set their goal to six months, for example, and their design plan. But the design plan will be like, okay, uh, what do I need to do now to get to my dream in six months? It, that's never going to work. <laughs> Wait, it's, it's never not going just going to fall in my lap? <laughs> no. And so it's like exactly that. It's like when like when I'm planning my week, I'm like, okay, what what do I don't say? What do I want? My what what do I want to have achieved by Friday? Like, what do I want to achieve today? What do I want to achieve in like the, in half a day? It's like it's exactly that it's like your design plan is like and it, it, exactly that do what you can with what you have it's like what you have now is going to be if you follow your design plan is going to be different to what you have in six months right. what you what you will have in six months you don't you don't have now right so you have to use what you have now in order right. to get to the next step and then the next step use what you have to get to the next step 
Right. And yes. also not like, put it off. Sense? Not put it off. Like exactly. Start exactly. now. Like don't don't say in six mm-hmm. months I want to do this. I'm gonna start in five months. Like what I you don't want to be now. You don't want to in six months say, I wish I started this six months ago. Right. Because you've lost six months. <clears throat> and so and and and, and that people do it like I do it all the time. I'm like, oh I'll do it tomorrow sure. or I'll do it that way. Like, and it's like it's it's okay to do that. It's just not okay to do that all the time. For sure. Yeah. It's like I'm like, oh like I have like a um a 70% rule where as if I don't want to if I don't feel a hundred percent like I used to be in the industry if I, if I wasn't feeling a hundred percent like to do something, it's like, oh I don't want to work out. I'm not like feeling a hundred percent. Or I'll, I'll wait till I feel a hundred percent, I'll wait till I feel more active or I have more energy. I'm never going to work out ever. Right. Like I am not like I am not a fitness freak. Like it takes a lot for me to put up the energy to work out. And it's like so now I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling a hundred percent, but I'm gonna put I'm seventy percent effort into it. Because that's so if you put seventy percent effort into something, you're still putting a hundred percent into it. And it's like I will put on like a fifty minute cardio video because I'm like, oh, that's literally mentally as much as I can do right now. And then I end up doing half an hour, 45 minutes because I, I, I'm up and I'm doing it and it feels right. good. Right. And so it's like, it's exactly that. It's like, do what you can, what you have. It's like, it's such an important message to me. Right. <clears throat> right. And while you're doing I'm it, just give it everything preach, you like, have. And I'm not one to preach. Like, I am a work in progress. <laughs> of course. But, but I've, I've learned that you have to make progress in order to progress. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I love that. You have to progress if you want to progress. <laughs> you, want to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it was if you have to make progress if you want to progress. Yeah. <laughs> that agrees. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, but I, th- but also just, you know, give whatever you're doing, everything that you have, you know, and then. Exactly. And you, you're, you're never, if you keep, like, you're never going to be at a hundred percent. Like it, you're never going to feel a hundred percent to do something. So it's like attack it with what you have and you will always find that you have more than what right. you have. If you start doing something. For sure. Yeah. Like I have ADHD. It takes a lot for me to focus. Um, and like I get distracted very easily but like once I'm in like a focus like once I put myself in a focus period I will be in that focus period for an hour yeah awesome but it's like again it's that design plan it's like what am I going to do to put myself into that focus period right well because you made that plan you're able to to stay on that for sure Mm -hmm. awesome um my goodness, you've given us a lot of information, Haley. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so when I see the word sustainability, what does that mean to you? Survival. Survival? Uh, the survival. And I think I answer that really quickly. <laughs> I've been thinking about that a lot. No, I, I genuinely think that the only way that we are going to tackle global problems such as climate change and um, deforestation, wildlife reduction, um, and basically keep us on this planet is more sustainable options. Like I'm a vegan. I will preach veganism all day long for health, climate change reasons, all of it. But I'm like, I think sustainability sustainability is, is the better word because you can do things. You can, do things more sustainably you can live more sustainably you can reduce waste you can shop more sustainably you um you you can like for me it's like the big the obvious solution to the the healthcare system especially in the uk is sustainability it's like to save the healthcare system it needs to be more sustainable and it's it is it's that it's like if we were a more sustainable race and made our planet more sustainable i think that we would we will survive it's it's survival 
we will see a reduction in climate change. We will see a reduction in waste. And and to me, it's like, and to, to most of the public, it's such an obvious solution. But it's like, you have the wrong people in power right now. You've got, right. like, we're seeing, like, and I'm seeing this traveling as well, like, everywhere we go. And since COVID, it's moving to such a right wing, mm-hmm. like, a, a political landscape. It's like the right wing parties are rising up. They, they're getting elected. It's, it's scary. It's like, it's, and they don't have sustainability on the agenda because it's, Profits over planet, it's profits over people. We saw it with COP28 in, in August. It's like you, you're literally at a climate change conference and you're, to, you're negotiating fossil fuels. It's like the, the ignorance and arrogance of it is, is terrifying. That's what scares me. Because at the end of the day, it's like if you're not saving the planet and you're driving us all to extinction, you can't take the money with you. It's not going to help you. Right. It's like surely in order to enjoy and spend and make even make more money, you want to extend the life of the planet and the life of the people. And you mm-hmm. want to it's like the more like climate change gets worse, the more ill people will get. The the like smaller the, the population, right? The the which then shortens and shrinks the economy. Like all of those things, none of those things are gonna make you money. You're going to help you lose money. It's like it doesn't make sense to me. Like there's such an agenda against sustainability and tackling climate change, and I just it's really difficult to see why sometimes. So yeah, I went off on a rant now. I'm sorry, <laughs> but for me, sustainability means survival. It seems so easy to get there, really. I mean, honestly, if you're thinking about, it's, it's easy to get political the, when it comes to that. I could like do a whole podcast just on this. <laughs> I like the solutions to me are so obvious and right. so easy and so cost effective. Yeah. Yeah. But or, or can be cost effective. It's just we live in a world like we we we, we call it the vegan culture war. Is that there's such like an anti vegan agenda at the moment, especially like from a PR point of view. Um, and like Veganuary, I don't know if you guys do it in America, but in January we have Veganuary. It was like no one wanted to talk about it this year. And it, it was challenging. And it's like, and the issue is, is that we live in a world where like, the, 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 the sustainability solutions and the vegan solutions that are available to us right now are more expensive. Mm. And companies that are being told to use more sustainable plastics, sustainable materials, like they're just not willing to invest or spend the extra money. And smaller businesses can't do it. Right, right, right. But, I mean, so I mean- like there needs to be... Yeah. I mean, I think that what, what you were saying before about, um, having the plant, when you were saying, um, you can plan whatever, but if you don't have the design, the vision, I'm, I can't remember yeah. your exact words, but design like, plan, yeah. the design plan. Yeah. But so we need what, that's what we need. We need someone to come up with this design plan and then we just need people to say, this is what we're doing everyone Mm -hmm. everyone not just you know in the u.s there are like you know they're the outside states basically recycle and compost and stuff like that but there are a lot a lot of the inside states don't um and florida i mean you've been to florida they don't do that but um... (laughs) oh my gosh i can't (laughs) even get into like the sustainable problems in florida um it's like like i have i have been to like the deepest darkest depth of europe and (laughs) Florida is just like the hardest place to be vegan. Just I cry. I was like the food waste and the waste in general. That oh my gosh, I was like there for six weeks and I was crying. I was like, this like there needs to be a better way to do this. Mm-hmm. And and I understand it like the like at the moment with the wars and the global issues, like it just isn't on the top of the agenda. But it would solve so many problems, not wars. But it would solve um like it would solve so many generalized issues like the healthcare system. It would it would boost the healthcare system. Mm-hmm. It would tackle landfill issues that, that we're like seeing more and more of. It's right. just it's it just needs a, a government the government to, to put up investments and it's just something they just seem very reluctant to do. Yeah. Yeah. We just need everyone to be on the same page. And it's so hard with like you were saying, the polarization. Um 
it's just, yeah, it's really hard to get there. So we just have to do the best that we can with what mm -hmm. we have. <laughs> And uh, I think that's like it was the sort of the most depressing thing about travel is that it just genuinely like makes you realize that you see like Brazil, for example, is like full of waste and the carnival is amazing, but the amount of waste after carnival and things like that and the rubbish is like you look and you're like, I am doing the best that I can as a human and even I fail in this. But like I'm one person, these are entire nations that just are producing so much waste and so much plus plastic use and animal use and it's like you sit and you're like nothing I do matters like it just feels like that it's like I'm gonna keep continuing because I want to make a difference but like realistically nothing I'm doing is really making that big an impact I think there's like a Lee Evans joke once like a, a, a British comedian and he was like oh when the government uh, do those ad campaigns they tell you to switch your living room light off every night and like make sure that the uh the electrics are off and things like that. And he said, then you look at Las Vegas. <laughs> it's like, right. I'm not making a difference. <laughs> oh, it's so true. I mean, it does, it totally does feel like that, but we just have to, we just have to keep at it. I mean, cause you know, you're leading by example for one. I mean, hopefully the time that you're in Brazil mm -hmm. will, will rub off on some people and they'll be like, you know, do we really need to do that? You know, mm -hmm. remember those nice people from the UK when they were here and they just, you know, they were just. I remember those twitchy vegans that told us we were doing everything wrong. <laughs> they were just so quiet and nice and they just, can't we be more like them? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, quiet and um, nice, you've not been traveling with us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. But I, so the one last thing that that I remember uh, you had you had mentioned on your guest form was that was changing the world. But I think we just I think we just nailed that one. <laughs> just with the <laughs> sustainability. Um, but so if somebody is totally inspired by everything that you're saying, Haley, and they want to follow you, follow your journey, and um, and watch your cat pictures, and you know see what you're up to. Uh, how can they follow you? Um, the most valuable thing there are cats. <laughs> um, so we're on Instagram, um, Haley and Marcus. And you can, uh, my company is called Be Yellow. Uh, the website's beyellow.life. And I don't really use my own personal Instagram anymore. We sort of have a joint one that we, we update. So that's probably, and that's our travel content. So that's probably the best one. Okay. And I'll put that in the show notes, but, um, oh my goodness, this has been so fun. <laughs> it's been so fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been so fun. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know you. I've loved watching your Instagram and I just, I love anybody that loves cats for sure. Um, <laughs> but, and travel. And I'm so glad to know about, um, like Bosnia. Slovenia has been on my very short um, bucket list for a long time, but interesting to know about Bosnia. Um, we hired, um, when we did it at the Balkans the first time, we just hired, we hired a car, I think, in, it was in Croatia. And we just, we did six weeks and we did all of the Bosnian, uh, all, Bosnian, all of the Balkan countries, apart from Kosovo and North Macedonia. And we did, we managed to do it in six weeks and we spent sort of like a good sort of week and a bit in each country exploring around it's this it's so easy to do right cool just don't do what i did and then go between the, the border crossing between serbia and bosnia and get the currency wrong and end up paying 25 pound for a can of coke <laughs> Gee, that's i was so tired and i got so confused because we were literally at the border and we got out to buy a drink at the garage and i got a can of coke and i was just like I was trying to work it out in my wallet. And the guy, like, obviously just, like, couldn't believe his luck. So he took, like, the money. And I was, like, kind of back and I was, like, and it was like, going to the master's, like, you've just given him, like, 50 Bosnia, which, like, I think it was, like, this was, like, guessing but what happened. But the 50 Bosnian is a lot, worth a lot more than 50 Serbian. And I got so confused. You live and learn, man. I mean, you do. It's a mistake. I repeat. <laughs> it was the border. <laughs> oh, that's, that's. I guess that 
it happens when you're crossing borders, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. Anything, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for all the information you've shared. I really appreciate that. And I just, I'm so, I'm so impressed with everything you guys are doing. I, I, well, thank you. I didn't even lot. realize all the stuff that you're doing with your company. I just thought you were going to talk about like traveling the world, but <laughs> I I'm so impressed and I'm going to, I'm going to like look into that more because that's very cool. Um, <clears throat> So thank you so much for being here and um, folks make sure to follow Haley and Marcus on Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you're on Instagram and, um, and check out all their cat pictures and their travel pictures and, and, (laughs) and uh, you can, if you're listening to the podcast, you can watch us on Instagram on, on YouTube and uh, you can get the, the pre pre chat. (laughs) (laughs) because it started recording before we were really ready but anyway thank you so much Haley I really appreciate this thank you no thank you so much I'm really glad that we connected yeah and I'll speak to you soon